Awesome. How's everyone feeling today? Good? How's the energy levels? It's almost lunchtime. Yeah? Okay. Well, look, guys, uh, I want to start off by apologizing in advance. Uh, I'm a bit of a data nerd, so I was very thrilled at the last presentation when he was talking data, data, data. Uh, so today's presentation is going to be quite heavy upfront on some data, on a bit of research I've done into the industry more broadly, the industry here in India, uh, what I see as some of the potential opportunities, uh, with a specific focus, obviously, on game engineering. So I want to get through these uh, data-heavy slides uh, as quickly as I can, I promise. And then I really want to spend a lot of time answering any questions that you may have. I, I feel that's probably going to be the best bang for our buck today. Does that, uh, does that work for everyone in this crowd? Yeah? All right, let's get started. So uh, I'll start off just with a bit of an overview of keywords. Just a quick show of hands. Does anyone, has anyone heard of Keyword Studios? Couple? OK, great, great. Uh, I always like to joke that uh, keywords is one of the industry's best kept secret. Um, you know, when you look at pretty much any game that's been released in the last five or so years, keywords has, has touched it somewhere somehow. Uh, whether it's on the art production side, whether it's on the game uh, engineering, game development side, localization, quality assurance, you name it, we've had an impact on those games. So it's certainly, I, I will freely admit, I had not heard of keywords before I joined the company, uh, but I, I do genuinely believe we're one of the industry's best kept secrets. So as I said, we provide uh, external development services at all stages of the, life, uh, of the game development lifecycle. Uh, so, as I mentioned, you know, lots of different uh, service lines that we cover off, lots of different opportunities within our organization. Uh, we're 70 plus studios and counting at the moment. Yeah, we're on five continents, 23 countries. You know, we, we truly are a global organization. Uh, and we have a large and growing uh, contingent here, uh, here in, uh, in India as well. Um, so in terms of uh, the game development side of the business, that falls under our create service line. So that incorporates our game development arm as well as our uh, art production services. Uh, and coincidentally, that's the area that I'm responsible for. So my role at Keywords, I'm the, the global head of talent acquisition. Uh, my role is to effectively find people to help us continue growing our business. Um, and it's not an easy task, I'll tell you that. Um, and as that last point there, uh, India is a priority for keywords in terms of future growth, and we'll, we'll talk on that a little bit later as well. So market facts. I told you I was data heavy, so I apologize uh, for that. But uh, in terms of uh, just pulling some information together, um, as you can see there, the, the overall growth rate uh, for game development globally is very attractive. You know, we're looking at a 14.4% compound annual growth rate over the next five plus years, which is pretty much unmatched by a lot of industries. You know, we really are kind of leading the way in that sense. Um, Three billion players currently, and that's growing as well. Uh, if we just look at India, I think uh, some of the stats I saw was around about 350 million active gamers currently. And over the next five or so years, that's expected to rise to in excess of 600 million. So that's just a crazy number. We're talking about almost doubling uh, the you know, active gamers within India within five years. Um, why is that? Why is that? So if you look at some of those growth drivers, you know, we're looking at the proliferation of smartphones, obviously, growing internet penetration, um, the availability of games on the internet. Those are all things that tie in extremely well with the Indian market as well. So these are, these are global um, touch points in terms of why you know, gaming as an industry is growing. But if you actually broke it down, you could almost say that that's specifically related to India because all of those growth drivers you know, really are tied in closely to the growth within the Indian game market as well. Uh, even the uh, even the growing even the genres of games. Was anyone here uh, on the first night with the uh, IDGC Game Awards? Did anyone attend the Game Awards ceremony? Yep, few people. As you see there, the growing genres: puzzle, card, adventure, casual, hyper casual. I think they were all covered during those awards ceremonies. So again, this is the Indian sweet spot. Like it seems to be, you know, everything seems to be lining up uh, to be really positive. Uh, for the Indian market going forward. Moving on there. I really like this slide. I think it visualizes that growth rate. 
uh, as you can see, you know, currently we're talking about $230 billion industry. Uh, over the next, you know, up to 2030, so what was that, like eight or so years, we're talking about growing that, you know, 14% year on year, or compound annual growth rather, uh, and we're talking about going from a $230 billion industry to a $600 billion industry. Now, just to kind of put that into perspective, I, I mentioned, you know, we are one of the fastest growing industries. I was doing some diving into other industries. You know, I wanted to think, you know, is this, is this normal? Is this a, uh, an abnormal growth rate? Is this something that's pretty special to the gaming industry? The answer is yes. Uh, I looked into uh, renewable energy. So renewable energy, one of the fastest growing industries in the world at the moment. Compound annual growth rate over the same period of time is 8%. So we're almost double the growth rate uh, of one of the fastest growing industries globally. So I really think that puts it into perspective about the opportunities that lie ahead of us. Uh, and you know, to get to that level of growth, to maintain that level of growth, we need people. Uh, we need people to, to build these games. We need people to sell these games. We, we need people. So there's going to be an ever-increasing opportunity within our industry. Regional breakdown. I, I really threw this one in uh, because it really highlights the importance uh, and the growing importance of the Asia-Pacific region, which obviously uh, India falls under in terms of, uh, of these data points. So as you can see there, you know, currently it's accounting for you know, about half of global revenues. Crazy, that's a huge number. Uh, and more than half, 55% of, of total gamers. And that's, that's going to increase even more, as I said. You know, just within India, we're talking about almost doubling over the next five years in terms of you know, regular gamers. Um, right now, uh, those numbers are probably dominated by China. You know, China is probably uh, the leading, uh, um, uh, well, in terms of revenue, yes, in terms of total gamers, yes. But I truly believe that India is on the cusp of really taking off uh, and we'll give China a run for its money over the next uh, five plus years when it comes to both total number of players uh, and also revenue earned from, uh, from game development. Um, this one's just breaking that down a little bit more by uh, industry, um, or by segment rather, within our industry. Uh, so as you can see there, this again ties into why the Asia Pacific region and India in particular is a growing market. 53% of global revenues right now are coming from, from mobile. Uh, and we've, we, as we touched on the earlier slide, you know, India is extremely well positioned uh, when it comes to mobile game development. I threw in the, uh, the other two slides there as well, though, about don't forget about console, don't forget about PC. Uh, I know that they're a much smaller segment of the market, but there is a little bit of prestige attached to you know, console development, to PC development. Uh, and as you can see there, even though mobile is huge in terms of total revenue, in terms of players, its growth rate is actually less than that of console. So even though console is a smaller player in the total overall market, it's growing at a, at a faster rate than mobile, which I found really interesting. That really surprised me. Given the, the growth rate of mobile, given the size of the market in mobile, I was really surprised to see that. So don't forget about console and PC development. And Again, I apologize uh, if you can't see this one. Uh, I threw this one on because, uh, to me, it really highlighted uh, an opportunity uh, for, for the Indian market. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but what this slide basically represents is an overall kind of uh, examination of region, country, and segment, what they're known for in terms of the, the game development industry. So if you can see the Indian one there, which I can barely make out, all ticks in mobile, None in PC and console. So for me, this, don't get me wrong, I know there are people here in India uh, and here at this conference that are doing great work in PC game development, in console game development, but on the global stage, when people think India, they don't think PC or console development. And I truly believe that is a golden opportunity for this country to really stake its claim and say, okay, we're gonna be the leaders of game development going forward. It's a, it's a market that is really, truly untapped, uh, and I think one that we have a lot of potential to grow. So, obviously, you know, we've, we've done a bit of an overview of, of the industry more broadly. You'll hear about game engineering. You wanna know about game engineering. So, here's a bit of a breakdown on, you know, a high-level overview of the technical tools uh, and skills that are needed to kind of build you know, the types of games that we're looking at. 
So I don't think it'll come a, as a surprise to anyone here that when it comes to mobile development, Unity is the number one player. I think, just a quick show of hands, who here is using Unity in their current game development? Okay. On the flip side, who's using Unreal? Oh, that's, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that. That's great. Um, just a quick one. So who, someone who put their hand up for Unreal, what are you using it for? What kind of games? I'm, 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 so, okay, so you're using Unreal for mobile development. Interesting. Ah, oh, okay, perfect. Okay, no, great. So yeah, as you can see there, you know, when it comes to uh, to Unity, uh, obviously very heavily skewed towards mobile as well as VR, uh, which I know is also a growing industry within India. Um, when it comes to Unreal, it is the go-to engine when it comes to PC and console game development. Um, I also want to talk about the programming languages. So obviously, uh, Unity is very heavily attached, obviously, to to C Sharp, whereas Unreal is very much C++. I did talk about obviously providing a lot of data. I also want to throw in some anecdotal um, information that I've come, come across you know, in my role when speaking to studio heads. When it comes to um, developing games on mobile, one of the things that we're seeing across our studios, across the world, is developers that have great um, skills with Unity, not so strong on the actual fundamentals of programming uh, when it comes to C Sharp. So, uh, I'll certainly cover this off a bit later, but one of the, the hints and pieces of information that if I could impart to you today is, yes, learning the game engine is certainly a super useful, super critical tool when it comes to developing your career, but if you want to stand out, you want to set yourself apart, you need to dig deeper into those coding fundamentals. You need to understand the how, what, and why of how code works. And whether that is you're using Unity or Unreal, that, that advice is consistent across the board. Okay, so I wanted to show uh, this slide. I think it's an interesting one, uh, and it's kind of going to get at a kind of theme that you'll start to hear me talking about. Um, this is obviously UK-based data, so you can kind of ignore the, the, the salary numbers. But what I, why I wanted to show this was it's a breakdown of salaries based on which engine you're using. So as you can see there, Unity. Yeah, some great numbers there. But there's a, quite a substantial jump when you go to Unreal, an even more substantial jump when you go to uh, custom game engines. The reason why this is, I think, is important, those custom game engines, when it comes to development in the PC and console space, almost exclusively they're built off the back of C++. So again, what I, the message I'm trying to kind of sell here is it's an opportunity to start differentiating yourself, to start moving into a different area that maybe is the majority here in India, which is Unity C Sharp. There's a real opportunity to start building out your skills in C++ and Unreal, and that is really going to start helping you, you know, I guess, differentiate yourself from what can sometimes feel like an oversaturated market. Okay, so just a snapshot here. Uh, of, the, uh, of the global engineering job market. Uh, obviously using some pretty standard criteria here, I used uh, computer games and mobile games with the function of engineering. So as you can see, 145,000 people globally, um, 7,400 odd job posts. I just wanted to throw this up there because it's going to play in nicely to the, the next slide, which is here. The, so in terms of job posts, the reason I wanted to throw this one up here uh, you can see there, you know, these are the top 10 hiring locations for, for game engineers across the globe. So as you can see, um, we've got a bunch in you know, the US, some in Canada, some in India, some in China. What really stood out for me on this was the hiring demand. If you look at anything that's given a very high or a high rating, they tend to be in the US, in Europe, um, in Canada, why that's important is the type of games they're building. You know, those markets are traditional, like they're much more heavy on the console and PC development. So what does that tell you? What language, programming language, do you think they're using? What game engine do you think they're using? It's not Unity. Um, when you look at then, compare that to, to China, to even India, um, the, the hiring demand is rated pretty low. Um, so I found that really interesting. You know, it, it really kind of stood out to me that, okay, if you as a game engineer 
whether you're starting a career, whether you're looking to transition into a different area, maybe C++, maybe Unity is going to open up a few additional doors that you know, Unity and C Sharp alone may not. And again, this kind of highlights that again. So this is just a quick snapshot uh, of um, the skills, top 10 skills required uh, on those job posts that we could see. Uh, and again, what really stood out for me on this, if you take C Sharp, you take Unity, uh, the two job posts there when they're listed as uh, the skills required, you add those together and it's not even, uh, it doesn't even equal the number of jobs available for C++ developers. What's interesting on that again as well is those C++ developers, when you look at the, the number of professionals, is half of Unity and C Sharp combined. So half the number, same amount of jobs. Again, I'm hoping you're picking up a bit of a theme here that if you're looking at opportunities to continue your, your game development or your game engineering career, considering adding C++, considering adding Unity development skills, uh, sorry, Unreal development skills, are probably going to go a long way to helping you stand out from the crowd. Additionally, um, when it comes to you know, going off the data piece and talking anecdotally now as a talent acquisition professional, uh, I can tell you, you know, uh, one of my colleagues here today is from the Asia Pacific region, Stan. Uh, I work with another gentleman who looks after our uh, North American uh, business unit as well as our UK and Europe. All of those areas are open to hiring international people, but guess what kind of skill set they're looking for? I can honestly say, you know, the company that I started working for in keywords, based out of uh, Canada, We've hired probably 20 people in the last 12 months internationally. You know, we've brought them in, we've gone through the visa process, we're committed to getting them into Canada, established and, and building their career there. Not one of them has had a Unity focus. They've all been C++, all been Unreal. And the reason for that is quite similar to the Indian market. Finding Unreal developers is not as difficult as it is finding, sorry, finding Unity developers is not as difficult as uh, finding Unreal and C++ programmers. Uh, and again here, I, um, I told you I'm a data nerd. I, you, I used this slide, I pulled it out to see which the, you know, how many jobs uh, were being uh, presented by each of these uh, companies. I did some digging so that you don't have to. I went onto every single one of these job pages. I went through their hundreds and hundreds of jobs uh, to look at what skill sets they were looking for in their engineers. So I can tell you, Roblox, and I don't have my notes that I, that I put on here. I can't see them, so I'm going off memory here. Uh, but Roblox, uh, they had Lua and C++ as their programming languages. King, if I recall correctly, had a 10 to 1 ratio of C++ and Unity um, developers. Uh, Epic, well, that goes without saying, almost exclusively uh, Unreal and, and C++ there. Uh, IGT had a bit of a split. So IGT was C++ and C Sharp. Uh, Keyword Studios, I can speak pretty confidently about that one. Uh, predominantly C++, a little bit of C Sharp. So we do, we do uh, do C Sharp and Unity programming, but definitely skewed much more towards uh, Unreal and C++. Rockstar came up, mostly C++, Unreal. Sumo, same. Uh, Cloud Imperium had a little bit of a split. Wargaming, pretty much exclusively C++ with a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, and Playticker was the only one on this top 10 list that had more C Sharp slash Unity uh, opportunities than C++ and Unreal. So again, I think it gives you a pretty good um, trend line uh, on a global scale of which skills are going to be most in demand. And this one shocked me, I'm not gonna lie. This is the same information on uh, breakdown of engineers. Um, you're working in computer games and mobile games, but just with an India focus. So 13,095 engineers on LinkedIn say that they work uh, in, the, in that industry, one of those two industries. Do you want to hazard a guess at how many software developers or software engineers are on LinkedIn from India? A million? More? Two million? Six million. Six million software developers list their profession as, well, as a software developer on LinkedIn in India, 13,000 of them working the gaming industry. That's crazy to me. That is such a missed opportunity. 
But at the same time, it excites me a lot because if we can convert even 1% of that 6 million to work in our industry, the Indian game industry triples, quadruples overnight. So the upside is huge. So I think, again, being a bit of a data nerd, I think that worked out to be 0.2% of all software developers in India currently working in our industry. Such a missed opportunity, such a huge potential for this country to, to really pivot and become a true leader when it comes to game development, not just within the region, but I'm talking globally. I really see India as a sleeping giant that's about to wake up. Um, and again, uh, I, I just looked at you know, the Indian job market, what were the, the top job opportunities. You'll notice what's not on that list. And what, what's not on that list is C++ and Unreal, okay? Again, I think that's a, uh, a bit of a current state, you know, because India is a mobile gaming uh, market. That's where their strengths lie. But we need to somehow figure out how we can adjust that, how we can change that trajectory uh, and take on board uh, those C++, those Unreal jobs, bring them to this country uh, or develop them in this country, whatever the easiest way to do it, maybe both. Uh, and again, um, I didn't do as deep a dive on this one as I did with the, the global one, but I, my initial kind of, uh, when I started looking at these, C++ Unity, uh, sorry, C Sharp Unity, C Sharp Unity, C Sharp Unity, was pretty much the, the trend line that I saw on here. Uh, keywords was a bit of an exception. Uh, obviously, we're looking for, for C++ developers uh, and Unreal developers, but um, yeah, for the majority of those roles here in this market, definitely skewed towards Unity and, uh, and C Sharp. So, my thoughts. Let's before we, uh, I'll go, go through this slide and then we'll, we'll open it up to questions from the audience. So, local versus international opportunities. So, hopefully, during the course of this presentation so far, you've picked up a bit of a theme of what I've been driving at here. If you're someone who is super passionate about mobile game development, um, if you want to build your career on, you want to continue on that vein, by all means, you are in one of the best markets to do that. I think India is going to explode over the next few years in that market, uh, and it's certainly a great place for you to, to build those skills, develop those skills, and really you know, drive your career in that direction. Having said that, if you're someone who has a passion for PC game development, console game development, you want to work on those AAA titles, you want, you want that prestige that comes with you know, those big AAA titles, then console and PC development is where you want to be. I'll be perfectly frank and honest, C Sharp, Unity, it's not going to get you there. So if you're looking to move into that space, you are going to need to build your skill sets in, uh, in C++ and in Unreal. Now, the good news is there are plenty of free tools available to do that, um, that can help you with that. There are plenty of opportunities for you to build those skills. Uh, and also, there's plenty of opportunities to kind of stake out a claim early in this market to say, hey, we're going to be, I'm going to set up a studio and we're going to build PC and console games out of India, because not many people are doing that yet. Also, on the international side, if you as a professional are interested in moving uh, into uh, another market, if you want to you know, continue, your, continue your career in Australia, continue your career in Europe or the UK or the US or Canada. Again, as I said, probably C, uh, C Sharp and Unity is not going to be the, the pathway that gets you there. Um, as I said, you know, from my own personal experience over the last 12 or so months with 20 international hires, not one had that you know, particular specialty. They were all C++, all Unreal programmers, working on console and PC development. So diversifying your skill set kind of flows on nicely from that point. So as I said, um, if you're looking uh, to move into a different area, there are plenty of uh, free tools. I know Unreal has plenty of uh, free online training. Uh, there are plenty of uh, programming sites like Coding Game. Uh, there's a bunch of them where you can sign up for free, take coding uh, tests, courses. I strongly recommend it. If for nothing else, even if you're planning to work in mobile development, even if that's what you want to do, you're super passionate about it, having a more rounded skill set's not going to hurt you. It's going to help you stand out from a crowd. Um, in terms of uh, additional um, 
uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. In terms of additional uh, skill sets that you can look to develop as well, um, one thing I will say on that, again, this is more anecdotal feedback that I've received from multiple studio heads across, uh, across the keywords um, network. In terms of programming skills, so we get a lot of applications from people who are really great at using Unity to build a game, and that's fantastic. One of the things that we're seeing a bit of a trend on, though, is lacking that deeper set of fundamentals on the how, what, and why of, of, of coding. So again, if, if mobile development is what you want to do and Unity is the tool you want to use, that's great. What I would strongly encourage you to do, though, is still continue to build on those, those fundamentals when it comes to C++ or C Sharp. Um, it's, again, it's going to help you stand out from a crowd. Uh, most organizations these days uh, will put you through some kind of online coding test if you're looking for a job. And most of those coding tests tend to not focus so much on Unity or Unreal, they tend to focus on the fundamentals of coding. So again, continuing to build your skill set in that area uh, is certainly going to help you stand out from the crowd. Game engineering specialization. So this is, uh, this is one that uh, I really wanted to touch on as well. So, most engineers, when you're starting out, you're going to be a generalist programmer. You're going to be doing a bit of everything. I think the, the last presentation said the same thing. Uh, when it comes to uh, being you know, a generalist engineer, again, you can build a great career doing that. You can, you can have a fantastic career working as a generalist engineer. However, if you're passionate about something like graphics, design, uh, graphics programming, uh, tool development, uh, in-engine programming, you're going to need to focus on one of those areas. And, and again, this is mostly anecdotal feedback. I'd probably have to dig into the data a little bit more, but certainly when I'm looking at those roles, when I'm looking at those graphics roles, those tool development roles, those in-engine game programmer roles, almost all of them, certainly within the keywords framework, we're looking for C++ developers. Um, when it comes to that lower level programming, I think you're finding it's pretty much going to be exclusively C++. I could be wrong there, but certainly from everything that I've seen, it seems to be the case. Uh, and even in engine uh, programming, um, you need those strong coding fundamentals to be able to do that role. So kind of ties in nicely with what I was saying about diversifying your skill set. By diversifying your skill set, it sounds weird, but it'll actually help you specialize if that's something that you want to do. And my last point there, um, before we, we open it up to, to questions from the audience, I truly do see India as a future AAA game development powerhouse. I think you know, when you look at those numbers, I think India is unrivaled in being able to churn out really strong um, software developers. Now, right now, they all seem to be going to under in other industries. So we need to work out, OK, how can we bring them to our industry? How can we? broaden this ecosystem? How can we build this ecosystem and bring more people on board to make them realize, OK, I can actually have a long-term viable career as a game engineer? Um, so there's lots of different ways that this can be done. I think uh, with the right education, training, and support, we could look at uh, developing uh, your curriculum at the university level, at the college level, uh, at the boot camp level, to be able to you know, train people up in those skill sets that are going to be required for those AAA game development. I'm, and I'm mostly obviously talking here C++ and Unreal. Um, but also, you know, there are organizations that are looking to India as a potential, um, as a potential market to, to expand. So if I look at Keyword Studios, right now we are currently looking, we're currently talking to our studios across the globe to say, hey, we, we see India as a true untapped market. Uh, when it comes to game development. So we are currently working with a number of our studios to look at setting up subsidiary studios here in India. We're not talking about the boring outsource work. We're talking about being able to develop or co-develop AAA games for our clients out of India. Now, are we ready to do that just yet? Not quite, but we have plans in place to do that. So we're looking at kind of a multi-pronged approach. Um, so Manvendra in the crowd here, he's uh, the studio head for Luxure and also the keywords um, country manager here in India. Luxure have been running for a number of years now uh, and it's something called the In-Game Academy. It's mostly been focused on taking uh, recent graduates from, you know, from art studies, from you know, basically they've studied you know, art in one way, shape or form, putting them through a six month kind of boot camp to say, okay, well, let's get you game ready. We're looking at replicating that for engineers. 
So you might be coming out of university, you've completed your computer science degree, your computer engineering degree, it's pretty broad, we're going to take you, we're going to mould you, we're going to train you, everything you need to know on how to build a AAA game uh, in six months. So that is one way of doing it, that's one way that we're looking at uh, doing it. We're also looking at the ability to kind of entice and attract people away from those other industries, all six million of them, uh, and see if we can put them through that same program and, and bring them on board. So we're looking at this from a long-term perspective. I think, I really do think that India is kind of the future for not only game development, but also for keywords. I think we have such a golden opportunity, and you guys as game engineers have such a, it's, it's such an exciting time. Sorry, I'm getting excited, but it's such an exciting time for everyone in India that is in our industry, because I think things are going to explode over the next few years. Uh, I think you're going to continue being a leader in mobile game development, but I think you'll also start stepping out of those shadows of some of the other regions and really put your stamp on AAA console and PC development as well. That's just my feeling, my hopes. Um, we're certainly working towards it. Um, yeah, so look, that's everything that I have on my presentation. I, I wanted to give us plenty of time. I'm looking at the, the big countdown clock now. We've got about 14 and a half minutes. So I really wanted to open it up to the floor. Um, who has any questions? Whether it's, yeah, perfect. Let's see them. Uh, so hello. First of all, amazing insights. Uh, and I'm a UX designer, basically. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly in the gaming industry. Sure. So I would like to know how, let's say, UX designers can uh, bring in some value to this industry if, let's say, we are put on any gaming project. Sure. Um, no, that, that's a great question. So you, I can, again, talk from my current experience right now. Uh, so Keywords, as I mentioned, we're a service provider. So we work with lots of you know, big studios, Ubisoft, Bethesda, all, you know, Sweet, all the Microsoft studios. We work with a lot of them. The number one thing that they're asking us for outside of programmers right now is UI UX designers. Um, so there is a, a significant amount of opportunity. Now, in terms of the, the local India market, I'm not as familiar. Uh, but certainly what I can say is, you know, when we start to build out these studios here in India, I'm, again, I'm putting my keywords hat on here, so apologies. But when we start to build out these studios here in India that are focused on, you know, AAA console game development, it's not just going to be engineers. It's going to be artists. It's going to be designers. So there are certainly going to be opportunities. Um, it's definitely a a market that we're getting a lot of interest from, from clients. In terms of the Indian market, I apologize, I, I probably can't speak to the specifics, but if you, uh, if you want to speak to someone about that, uh, come by the Keywords booth, I'm sure there'll be someone there that will be able to give you a lot more information on the pathways uh, for UX designers locally, uh, but definitely it is a growing discipline, for sure. Yeah, thank you. I hope that answered your, your question. Yeah, it did. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Rujan Sahu. I am a g game designer, and uh, I, I actually wanted to. I, I learned a lot. Great session, by the way. First of all. Thank you. So, uh, you talked about uh, Unity, C Sharp, and mm -hmm. uh, Unreal C++, and uh, the thing that I learned, and I had the back. Uh, I had at the back of my mind, and it's kind of confirmed right now that Unreal and C++, mm -hmm. like, they really. Uh, especially for the PC demographic and the console demographic, they really seem to broaden the scope of any entertainment medium that you create yep. in, uh, for pre predominantly games. Yep. But in the Indian market, um, PC and console are not yep. that much. Yet. But I know there are a lot of developers who are really passionate about uh, developing for PC and console and to create experiences that have huge scopes and have mm. huge impacts on someone who plays it. The problem is the market. Yep. And uh, I know it's not going to change overnight. That is simply impossible. But what can we as developers do from our side to yep. make sure that uh, people really broaden their c uh, consumer uh, yeah. thing that they do? Yeah, it's a tough one, right? It's the chicken and the egg scenario. <laughs> um, you know, there's definitely, I understand why Unity and C Sharp is, is more, much more popular here and why you know, Unreal and C++ is less so. It's because what, you know, that's, what, that's what the market's demanding. Um, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a migration of studios like ours, like Keywords. I don't think we'll be alone. I think we're just hopefully going to be one of the first to, to do it right. 
um, there are going to be more growing opportunities. So if I'm if I'm putting if I'm looking at it from the lens of you know, you as an as an engineer or a game designer, um, I would just start building up my own skill set now. And as I said, there are plenty of free tools uh, available to do that. Unreal has you know a lot of free resources. There's plenty of those coding type uh, sites out there that can help you. You're right. It's going to be a slow burn, uh, but I think when we're going to get to a breaking point, and when that when that dam bursts, it's going to be a flood. When one or two studios come here, build out those teams that are working on AAA games for the console PC market. Okay, it might not be for India initially, right? It might be for uh, the North American or the European markets. It might be working for clients there. But I think once one or two studios do it well, we're going to see a flood. We're going to see uh, such a demand of companies coming to India to say, right, we're going to set up you know, Ubisoft India here. We're going to set up... Bethesda India here, right? Because I think there's a perception, certainly externally right now, that India is only mobile. And that to an extent is true. But there's also a super passionate group of people, really smart engineers, that I know with a with given the opportunity to to switch, to work on C, to work on Unreal, to work on some of these games, they'll jump at it and they'll be great at it. So, you know, you're already awesome at mobile. Let's get you awesome at PC and console as well. And let's let the world know about it as well. Yeah, thanks. And uh, so basically what we need is a starting point. Yep. And uh, which will, like, create a kind of a chain reaction and then... Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not going to happen overnight. Like uh, I said, exactly, it's, it's yeah. going to be a handful of people taking a risk like us at Keywords, doing this, getting it right, showing the rest of the industry, hey, India are developing AAA console games. Yeah, it's, it's highly risky, though. Is, uh, yes mean, and no. I, like I said, I, I believe this country is full of really smart engineers and developers. Uh, we just need to convince them that the gaming yeah. industry is the right one for them. So I know we're certainly talking about you know, doing it at the, the curriculum level, working with some of the schools to say, hey, let's tailor the curriculum a little bit when it comes to game development to focus on C++, to focus on Unreal, to give people the, the options. Um, we'll get there. We'll get there, and it will happen. I guarantee it. Like I, I, I can't see India just be being focused on mobile development forever. You guys are too hungry. You're too smart. You're too passionate to just want to stick into one genre. So, uh, I, I personally believe it's going to happen. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm here for the ride. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, it was a great session. And myself, Hassan, and currently I'm a student studying mm -hmm. computer science and game development. Okay. My doubt is uh, it's uh, mandatory. It's, it's mandatory of, for a degree to enter the keywords or a, any global studio. Degree really matters, or qualifications or skills. Yeah. Um, depends. So we we look for people who have strong programming fundamentals. Okay, historically, what that means is you know someone with a formal education tends to have those strong fundamentals, whether it's programming in C sharp or C plus um, plus. Having said that, you know I know certainly in the North American market, I think Stan could probably talk to the Australian market a little bit as well. But we've also hired a ton of um, programmers who are self-taught. You know they 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 don't necessarily have the piece of paper that says I'm a computer engineer or a computer science graduate but they have the skill set that we're looking for. So um, I'm not sure whether this, that, that's the same in the Indian market, and I'll, I'll certainly have to do a little bit of in, you know, digging in, the, in, that, uh, in that sense. But overall, we're looking for skills, not so much the piece of paper. That's, that's certainly my viewpoint. But having said that, generally that formal education background is going to give you those strong fundamentals that is going to help. It's going to set you apart because, again, when we speak to a lot of self-taught developers, they're great at using a game engine like Unity to build a game, but if something goes wrong, they struggle to dive into the how and why of that because they lack that strong uh, programming fundamentals. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. And apart from Unreal and C++, as a student, what skills uh, should be improved to be a one step ahead from others? Mm. Yeah, good point. So I, I think if you if you become a C++ or Unreal expert or even uh, you know have some good skills in that area, automatically you're a step above, because I would say the vast majority of people 
that are applying for roles in India are, are coming from a Unity C Sharp background. So right there, you're, you're kind of setting yourself a, apart. Um, I always like to see people who uh, are developing their side projects, um, particularly for people who are just starting out in their career. Um, people who are genuinely passionate about game development, doing their own side projects, having a, a Git repository that you can show to people is certainly uh, beneficial as well. Um, you know, what we see sometimes is people who apply to the gaming industry because it sounds fun, but they're not necessarily passionate about it or they don't really know what they want to do. So if I'm given uh, an option between someone like that who has a strong, um, strong results on paper when it comes to maybe a degree, but doesn't have the passion that, say, someone who's a little bit weaker might have, I'm probably going to lean to the guy who's super passionate. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we've got a question over here at the, in the middle there. Just over. Technical uh, difficulties. Uh, hello. Uh, Hi there. First of all, uh, a wonderful uh, panel. And uh, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, uh, apart from uh, C++ and uh, Unreal, uh, what are the major tools that uh, we game developer has to, like, focus on uh, for, you know, the upcoming future? Hmm. Major, uh, yeah, I guess as a game developer, I mean, those are, those are pretty critical. Um, but if you're talking more broadly, uh, your other tools and systems that are used you know, in the production lifecycle. Uh, anything that's kind of a project management style tool, so Jira, Trello, those types of things, a lot of, a lot of our people work with those types of systems just to manage, um, uh, manage work. Uh, I think Perforce is another one that, that comes up. Um, when it comes to actual game development tools, to be honest, it's, it's the game engines themselves um, are the ones that pop up. 99 times out of 100. Um, there's nothing else that right now off the top of my head I can think of that, I, that I've seen. Um, but yeah, no, I'd say if you're focusing on just the, the programming languages, the tools, that's enough for now. Particularly if you're, are you just starting your career? Um, actually, I'm a student at uh, Perfect. Don't overcomplicate it. Focus on the, the game engine, focus on the, the programming. The other stuff, the tools that you use on the production lifecycle, every company will teach you how to use those. You know, because most companies use a different tool or a different system. I would focus on the, on the game engine, on the programming languages. That is going to really set you up for success. All right, thank you. No worries. Yep. <laughs> Shout it out. I can hear you. Oh, hang on. I think we got, we got one coming. There we go. Hello. Yeah. So uh, uh, you gave some really nice insights on the like diversity of the video game industry. So uh, one thing that uh, you pointed out was that there's a lot of software engineers, but not mm. that many programmers yep. in the gameplay industry yep. compared to that. So uh, my question was like uh, a lot of the times, uh, like I work as a programmer mm -hmm. in a company. So a lot of the times I feel like uh, whenever we have software engineers who are uh, developing games now, so they don't have that much passion for video games mm. uh, as like uh, personally I have been playing video games since childhood and I have a lot of passion for this industry yep. but uh, they treat uh, video game jobs as a subsidiary of uh, the software industry only. Mm -hmm. So they work like that and I feel like uh, they miss out opportunities on innovations yep. and breakthroughs in say even not just uh, uh, engineering but also game design and stuff yeah so uh, my question was like how can we not just push uh, uh, software engineers into the gaming industry but also gaming in general how can yeah. we change that mindset that they have yeah it's a tough one right um, 
I just want, just before I answer that, I, do, I did want to say, when it comes to those six million engineers, I agree. Like the vast majority of them probably are not going to be passionate about gaming, but I can guarantee you that even if half a percent of those people uh, are passionate about gaming but didn't go down that route because they felt they couldn't or they didn't think there was the opportunity there, I think that's a missed opportunity and I think that's really what we want to tap into. Um, for me, I'm not, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer, but certainly you know, speaking to a lot of programmers and developers, um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to work in our industry. You know, there's a lot more variety, there's a lot more challenge, there's a lot more interest, as opposed to working on, say, a piece of enterprise SaaS software where it might be maintaining a legacy system, you're not doing anything new or exciting, it's the same thing day in, day out. That's certainly not the case when it comes to game development. You know, uh, the variety is, is unrivaled, I think, when it comes to, you know, being a software developer or a programmer. Um, going back to your, your question about how do, we, how do we raise the profile of the industry more broadly, events like this are a great start. Uh, but I think you know, what we need to start doing is looking at, okay, how do, we, how do we start presenting this industry as a viable career option earlier? Um, so I'm talking about you know, are, we, are we sending the right message at, uh, at high schools? Are we sending the right message at universities that, it, that this is a viable career path? I don't know. I, I'm not as familiar with, uh, with the Indian market as I am with the North American market, but certainly even in the North American market, um, you know, it's, it's still a challenge. Like people still see game development as not necessarily a viable long-term career. So we're doing things like engaging at the primary school level. We're going in and we're presenting at schools and letting people know, hey, this is a career option. Here are all the different ways that you can do it. Here's the pathways. Here's long term what you could be doing. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, in terms of messaging, yeah, it's just going to be a consistent drip. We need to do more events like this. We need to be doing more at the, the school level. We need to be doing more at the university level to promote this as a viable pathway uh, for a developer. Um, I think if we can start selling the international option as well, because I think a lot of people go into software engineering outside of gaming because they think that's their pathway to maybe getting a job outside of the country and doing something different and, and you know, becoming globally mobile. We can do that too, but we're just not telling people about it. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I think it's going to take time. Again, all of these things are going to take time, uh, but I think the messaging needs to be that you know, gaming as a career is here to stay. And if you saw, you know, those early slides that I showed, no market is growing faster than ours in terms of an industry. So we need to start getting that message out to people who are considering becoming a developer or becoming an engineer and say, hey, have you thought about gaming? Come and join us. It's fun. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it was really great insights. Thank you. I think we've got enough time for one more. I'm getting the big red times up uh, on the screen here. Um, These are the most temperamental microphones ever. Check. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. yeah, myself, Rahul. Okay. Uh, my question is not exactly the talent and acquisition. Sure. But uh, it's related to your presentation where you mentioned you are working with the studio to start, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in India, some yeah. kind of, you know, development. When we talk about the demographics, you know, the time zones kicks in. And when we see the regional distribution, when we talk about the US, Canada, it's yep. almost a 12 hours of difference. Yep. When we talk about the Europe, Europe has this tendency to, you know, keep their talent in their region. You know, they yep. want to work with the uh, studios or partners who are in their region. Yep. When we think about the Australia and New Zealand, it's very limited scope. Yeah. So how you are going to tackle this when you are targeting the Indian? Yeah, yeah. So that that's a good question and, and I'm glad you asked it actually because one of the things that I think historically um, the Indian market has been known for is kind of that outsource providing where you have to work to you know, the time zone that, uh, that the company is in. Our intention is to set up standalone studios. Right, so we're not talking about providing additional support to um, you know to some development that's going on in um, in the UK or Australia. The ultimate goal for us is to say, right, keyword this keyword studio in India. Here's your package of work. You're responsible for it. You work to your normal hours, but this is your work. So you're not you're not just assisting. You are developing a game or a component of a game because that's you know we work on the server side, and that's your project. So. For us, we actually see it as a, a great opportunity to kind of be like a 24-hour uh, production cycle, right, where there's always something happening. So I think that's a mind shift. 
I think that's that's going to be it's going to take time and it is going to be a challenge. I think initially there might be a bit of crossover where we need to kind of have some flexibility to to work some um, crossover hours whilst we're building the capability at the local level. But yeah, ultimately we don't want just that support. We want standalone studios that can deliver deliver AAA quality to our clients. Um, so that's I hope that kind of answers that question. Yeah. yeah. We're not interested in just you know having people work um, crazy hours to align with different time zones. Um, we want we want standalone studios that can do, you know deliver on their own. Yep. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you everyone. I've uh, I've really enjoyed these questions. Uh, I'll be at the booth for a little bit, uh, the keywords booth. For those of you who didn't get a chance to ask, swing on by. Otherwise, you can all connect with me on LinkedIn, and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions there as well. So thank you. Thanks, Gene.